Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general energy reading for your Tuesday, October 27th, 2020. Please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is a reading dated for the 27th of October, it does not mean that it absolutely has to resonate for you at that time. Whenever you are guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then that is the message for you in that moment. Also keep in mind that this is a general reading so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't yes quick announcements um i don't know in case you didn't see my post in the community tab on my page or on my channel um no weekly readings this week as i am using the schedule that i developed for the weekly readings to do the monthly love readings for patreon yeah cancer is up i did cancer yesterday uh today will be aries and scorpio yeah, it's the normal schedule for like the weeklies, but instead of doing the weekly readings, I'm doing love readings for Patreon. Yeah, if you are not following me on Patreon yet, I highly recommend that you do so. Um, I am going through a transition and I am reassessing, reorganizing where I put my readings. So I'm most likely going to go to daily readings over on Patreon very, very soon. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yes. Uh, but, uh... For tomorrow, Wednesday, um, I don't think I'm going to do morning coffee tomorrow um, because it's a three reading day for me. Tomorrow is, what's tomorrow? Gemini, Virgo, and Aquarius. So I'll be doing those love readings tomorrow. But then I'm also planning on doing happy hour tomorrow evening around 6 p.m. And I'm mentioning it today because I, I doubt that I'm going to do morning coffee tomorrow. Um, and normally I announce it the day of. Um, so just so that you guys know, to put it on your radar, if you want to check me out live tomorrow for happy hour, um, make sure to mark your calendars for that 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I guess I am willing to open the floor. I normally only do 10 readings during happy hour sessions. Um, and normally I don't open it until the day of, but because I'm announcing it today, if you guys want to get in on happy hour, you can do so. I'll put the information in the description box below. Um, it is going to be a live session. I did go live last night and that was freaking awesome. There was a collective reading that came through um, in the beginning of that live session. So if you want to, I highly recommend go ahead and checking that out. Um, it's titled just a random live session. I just randomly decided to go live last night. I wanted to do um, maybe an after hours session for Patreon. And then I read one of um, my patrons comments mentioning you know doing live session more live sessions on youtube and i was like you know what why don't i just go live right now and that's what we did it was great we had such a good time you guys should totally check that out anyway i guess that's it for now so let's get into the energies here and see what we have for your day yeah here we go hi spirit Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Tuesday, October 27th, 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. Alrighty, kids, here we go. Let's get into this here. I'm gonna give this five shuffles. What do I wanna do? I'm gonna put this here. Let's give this five shuffles and we'll see what we've got for your day, yeah? One. Two. Three. Four. Morning coffee. Yeah. For the collective here. And five. Oop. I'm going to take that. We have a card that's flipped out already. Let's see. The nine of cups. Okay. Happiness, contentment, 
safety, security. This is giving mm, this is giving me feelings of indulgence, um, a safe space, a secure space. I feel like you guys are hunkering down right now. Um, yeah, the Seven of Wands is at the bottom of the deck right now. So you're hunkering down, um, making space for yourself, really enjoying your time alone. Three of Pentacles underneath that, really working on yourselves. Um, this Nine of Cups energy is really giving me the feeling that whomever this reading is for, you're really quite focused on your own happiness right now. And that's actually a really good thing. Um, there could be, <laughs> you could be overindulging a little bit. You could be treating yourself a little bit. I mean, I'm not feeling like it's too excessive. I just feel like it's a, it's an energy of maybe you're doing a little more, indulging a little bit more, allowing yourself to enjoy a little bit more than you normally would. Um, and this is something that I really do agree with the fact that you deserve. You deserve this. Because Seven of Wands, Three of Pentacles, you have been working on yourself. Yeah, Ace of Swords too. Um, there could be even some revelations that you're coming to, uh, understandings about yourself. And I feel like you are almost in an energy of rewarding yourself for the hard work that you've done, which is great. Let's see what else we've got here for you guys. Okay, we're going to stop there for a second. Okay, we have the Emperor at the bottom of the deck now. You have the Chariot with the Devil and the Six of Swords. Yeah, yeah. So you guys really are moving away from some sort of devilish energy, from some sort of codependency, some sort of att attachment. You are, in fact, detaching. Um, you're really taking control here, the Emperor. You're being the leader of your life. Hmm. There's a decision being made by somebody here. Either this is you uh, as the emperor, or this is a, a masculine individual, someone that maybe is the divine masculine here, if you're twin flamey. You have the emperor with the seven of swords and the two of wands and the four of wands eh, and the knight of wands at the bottom of the deck. So somebody is making a decision, but they're being very quiet about it. They're not trying to talk about it. All right. I'm going to leave the emperor here and let's see what else we have. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, three of Wands at the bottom of the deck now, Five of Cups, Nine of Wands, and the Moon in reverse. So yeah, you guys, there's definitely some revelations that are coming through for you. Some realizations, some things are becoming uncovered, some things about yourself you're starting to understand greater. It is creating a sense of loss, but it's not with the Five of Cups energy. There's some sorrow, there's some, maybe some tears being shed, but Honestly, I feel like it's it's not really a loss. It's more of a realization. Um, some people may be left behind here, and that could be creating this Five of Cups energy. But there's definitely an energy of um, persevering, not giving up. It's very much, you've come this far, why stop now? And that's perfect. I want to, I want to, I want to look... Um, actually, I'm going to get one more pull, and then we're going to start clarifying a little bit. The Magician. Lots of major arcana here. Okay, we're going to stop there. Wow, so much major arcana. Look at that. The, her the Hanged Man is at the bottom of the deck. You have the Magician here, and then you have... The Queen of Cups here. Yeah, emotional realizations. There, there are some things that you're, I mean, some of you are really going very, very deep right now into yourselves, understanding who you are, understanding why you've been feeling the way that you've been feeling, recognizing traumas, um, uh, bringing awareness to your traumas and healing them, changing your perspective, changing your perspective for your life in the to, for the better. Okay. Well, also with the wow. Okay. Well, here we go. We've got the we've got the map. Oh. Okay. Well, the uh, the hanged man, the queen of wands, the empress. We have the emperor and the empress here. All right. And then the two. Uh, wow. And then. Wow, you guys. And then the lovers, and now the king of cups. So we have the emperor and the empress. We have the lovers, and we have the king and queen of cups. 
Uh, yeah, eight of pentacles to the tower, to the high priestess. We'll stop there. Um, now all of a sudden we're getting into some sort of twin flame or divine partnership, divine union type energies. Um, I, what I want to say is, and I, I guess I say this all the time, but what I want to say is someone is recognizing or realizing who their true divine feminine, who their true co feminine counterpart is. Um, and someone is really in the process of manifesting something brand new. Someone is making a choice for the better for themselves, for their lives. And if this isn't romantic for you, this is really just balance and harmony and union within, which is allowing you to make some better choices for your life. Having come to a deep understanding of yourself, your emotions, your feelings, your traumas, and standing up in that. Queen of Cups, King of Cups, being able to weather the storm, King of Cups, being emotionally mature, King of Cups standing up for yourself, facing your problems head on. And this is why it feels like with this Nine of Cups energy here, it feels like you're really allowing yourself to be rewarded. You're allowing yourself to revel in the new, the, the, this, this new understanding of yourself, the new realizations you're coming to. Some of you are coming out of some energies of being really stuck and stagnant for a while because you couldn't figure out what was wrong. You didn't understand why you were feeling so down, so low, so emotional. But now because these, are, because these realizations are coming forward, the moon in reverse, things are being uncovered. You're moving out of toxic situations. You're leaving the devilish energies behind. Some people, somebody here, I do feel like, and this is most likely on the masculine side, I feel like there is an individual or maybe a number of individuals that are finally leaving toxic relationships behind, toxic circumstances behind. And that's allowing them to align with their true divine feminine or their true feminine counterpart. Emperor, Empress, King and Queen of Cups, um, the Hanged Man to the Queen of Wands, which, was, which then was followed by the Empress. Um, again, oh, well, okay, I just heard recognizing toxic feminine energy and choosing to manifest your way out of that. Um, all of this is coming through because there's a lot of hard work that's happening. Eight of Pentacles to the tower, okay? Someone is really working towards a massive, massive change in their lives. And I'm hearing it's allowing them to align with a true divine feminine counterpart, okay? That's really beautiful. All right, let's start clarifying here. And I wanna start with the Nine of Wands. All right, so Nine of Wands here. This is perseverance, this is not giving up. Um, and I mean, there really is no reason to ask why, like, why would you not give up? But I feel like there's something more here that I want to understand about this Nine of Wands. So we're going to get into that right now. Just tell us a little bit about this Nine of Wands, please. Persevering. King of, wow. Yeah. Wow. Take these. All right, look, you guys, somebody is, whoo. All right, we do have the Two of Swords at the bottom of the deck, but we have the King of Wands here. We have the Magician again. We have the Knight of Wands. We have Temperance and we have the King of Swords. So this is a masculine energy. This is either a masculine counterpart or this is the masculine energy within you that's causing someone to really lean forward. I mean, somebody is really passionate here. Somebody sees a really awesome opportunity. Somebody is really activated. Somebody may have been even been doing the research, doing their research, trying to understand the situation, or at least somebody is just seeing the situation very, very clearly, and they're not about to give up. This is either you or somebody else that you're connected to. But someone here is really not about to give up. They do have their blinders on. Yep, to the illusions, the moon. Somebody wants to make an offer here. Yep, page of pentacles to the knight of cups, to the hanged man. Um, 
there's a realization here and someone really is not even trying to focus on the illusions anymore two of swords to the to the moon with the king of swords here okay someone sees very clearly someone is not about to give up and this is most likely on the masculine side but this could be you i mean this could be especially with this balance and integration of masculine and feminine energy that's been going on here um you could be this person that's very diligent i'm hearing dignified also okay um is really not trying to give up all right with that said let's talk about the emperor here Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, interesting. Five of Swords is at the bottom of the deck, but we have the Hierophant, the, the Hanged Man again, and we have the Knight of Swords. But the Knight of Swords did come out in reverse. Um, initially, I think... Okay, so... Uh, there might be an energy of um, fighting against the establishment, fighting against the patriarchy. However, I feel like you guys with this Knight of Swords that ended up coming out in reverse here, I feel like you're not fighting anymore. I think you really f realize, somebody here really realizes the fact that it's really a losing battle. There's no reason to fight against this establishment or anything. Um, Okay, there's a change in perspective that has happened here on behalf of this masculine energy or this emperor. Um, five of swords to the two of wands to the lovers at the to the ten of cups at the bottom of the deck now and the four of swords. So someone is realizing that this is a, a losing battle. This is not something that this is not a win-win situation. Okay, um, and someone is making ch a choice for themselves. Two of wands to the lovers to the ten of cups, and I feel like somebody if this is resonating for love in love. In a love sense for you, I feel like somebody is actually choosing true love now instead of fighting against tradition or uh, establishment or established circumstances. If this doesn't resonate in terms of love for you, then this resonates. This is probably has something to do with career, something to, to do with what you could make money from or something to do with just whatever it is you truly love. Ten of Cups, what brings you some sort of uh, ultimate emotional fulfillment? Okay. And taking action towards that, but not taking action in a way that is combative. No, Knight of Swords is in reverse here. Okay. All right. So let's look at it from the feminine side then, the Empress. Yeah. Yeah. Empress, right? Has the Four of Wands, the Eight of Cups, and Strength. Knight of Cups is at the bottom of the deck. I do feel like there's some sort of offer coming to this Empress energy. Um, being in the receptive mode, obviously, that's what feminine represents, right? Um, there's more. Hold on. Okay. All right. The Ace of Wands. So someone really does want to make an offer to this Empress energy here. Okay. Um, but I don't feel, I, I feel like, uh, yo creo que uh, they feel inadequate in some way. You do have the Five of Pentacles. This also might be your energy. If you're the Empress here, you might be feeling a little inadequate, but... That's an illusion, that's a lie, okay? Um, you have the Page of Swords also. So somebody is most likely, what I feel like is happening here is somebody is watching an Empress, a Divine Feminine individual, something like that, trying to figure out how, how to 
be in a reciprocal relationship with them. They're trying to figure out how to, what to make an offer to them. This empress is like this person's star, the masculine star, their guiding light, their wish fulfillment, like their ultimate dream. Now, if this doesn't resonate for lo in love for you, then this is your feminine side, okay? You're being, you're, you're very balanced in between masculine and feminine energy right now. Um, you're very balanced in your, or at least you're getting much more firmly balanced in <clears throat> activity versus receptivity. Okay, with this masculine energy here of the emperor, you're realizing that you don't need to fight against anything any longer. You're realizing that you can just make a choice and go in a different direction. You can make a choice that is in greater alignment with you. From the feminine side of the situation, you already have a really good solid foundation. Four of Wands to, the, to strength, the Eight of Cups. You're having the strength to leave the past behind okay you're following your intuition the star you're following your higher guidance there is a little bit of fear here there is a little a, a small sense of feeling inadequate but i feel like this is coming through for you because this is a very new thing this is a new reality for you this is a new circumstance for you this is a new path that you're taking that you I mean, this is something brand new for you. Page of Swords is you looking for opportunities to move forward, trying to understand, learning, being very watchful. I really do feel like, if this is not resonating on a love tip for you, I really do feel like you have such a strong balance between masculine and feminine energy within you. Like the Emperor and the Empress are actively working together within you okay all right last thing i want to look at, at well actually no not the last thing because the the hanged man came out twice i want to look at the hanged man and then i want to look at the lovers but let's look at the hang, hanged man here eight of pentacles yeah okay i mean that's pretty self-explanatory you've been doing the work You've been doing the work to change your point of view, to understand something differently, and the Ace of Pentacles, okay? And that's bringing you a brand new opportunity here. This is awesome, you guys. All right, finally, let's look at the lovers. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Okay, we have the world, the three, of pen the three of swords, and the queen of wands yet again with the six of cups. So what is happening here? Uh, this specifically, I feel like, is for the divine feminine. Um, those of us that resonate more with, the fem with feminine energy than masculine energy, even though we all have both. Okay, fine. Um, you've put an end to the heartbreak. Three of swords and the world. You put an end to the heartbreak and you're getting into direct alignment with what it is you truly want. This has a lot to do with the divine feminine walking away from the divine masculine in certain aspects. Um, I mean, many of you have been following me this whole time, so you know this narrative, but I'll, I'll do a slight recap. Um, there has been an energy of individuals that resonate with the divine feminine side of the twin flame situation finally decided finally said tengo que salir i need to go that's it i gotta go bye and is choosing herself um is choosing to align with herself is taking literally very quite literally taking back her right to free will because these situations with the, with the twin flame dynamic have just been so fucking toxic, <laughs> you know? And the divine feminine, and it's crazy because I used to get this message from my guides all the time when I was back in Brooklyn and I was in the heat of my own twin flame experience. And my guides, this one masculine guide, kept saying to me, you're making the same mistakes over and over again. And I never understood what that meant until I finally 
I finally got the cojones. I finally got the balls to say, fuck you, I'm out of here. I don't care if I ever see you again. I'm quite literally not trying to ever see you again. But if the universe lines us up together and if it works out that way, then so be it. But as of right now, I'm out of here, right? And then I moved to Puerto Rico. And that's when I finally understood what my guides were saying to me. I was making the same mistake over and over again because I kept letting the Divine Masculine back in under those circumstances. And those circumstances were toxic. And that's, that's, that's why we have such a massive thing around Twin Flames right now because we're all, if you're really truly resonating with the Twin Flame dynamic, it's about cleaning up the karmic energies. I know a lot of us, I think I heard somebody say this, it was, oh, who, uh, um, oh gosh, I don't watch her anymore, so now I forget her name. Sylvia with, um, she's a Twin Flame reader. Uh, gosh, Enchanted World of Twin Flames. I think it was her that said this. And when she said this, man, it struck such a chord with me, but, I, but basically it was that many of us would never have chosen to come back here if it weren't for this fucking karmic twin flame energy, right? I am definitely one of those people. Like I have grown, I, as I was growing up, man, when I was a kid, I was like, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, what is this shit? You know what I mean? But now that I'm, you know, I'm 33 now and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm really getting into my calling and I understand now, but many of us would not have chosen to come back to earth at this time if it weren't for I mean, if it weren't, I mean, it heavily weighs upon the fact that we're dealing with this twin flame situation. But then on top of that, you know, there is a there is a mission to help raise the vib vibration of the planet. And so all of this is tied in together, including the twin flame dynamic. As we heal and remove the toxic energies, we, we let go of the toxic feminine or the toxic masculine and we work on ourselves and we grow and we heal and we, Spirit just said, and we align with divine counterparts, okay, other than the twin flame that was causing the, that was, you know, wrapped up in the toxic energy, or maybe even if it is that same person, but now they've done their healing as well. As we go through this process, we are healing the, the wow, the universe is what I'm hearing. We're healing ourselves. We're healing the planet as a whole. We're healing and mending the karmic toxicity within wrapped up within humanity and wrapped up within this twin flame dynamic and so okay that makes sense right all right but the lovers here <laughs> i say all that to say the lovers here is clarified by the queen of wands the three of swords and the world putting the heartbreak to rest mending and healing our hearts so that we can get back on to our mission so that we can get back to ourselves the choice is ours, the lovers. And then you do have the Six of Cups at the bottom of the deck, Queen of Pentacles also. Um, aligning with a divine counterpart that's truly, I'm hearing match made in heaven. But in order for that to happen, you have to know your worth, Queen of Pentacles. And that's, that's such a big aspect of like what the divine feminine is putting forward right now. She knows her worth. And she's not going to give her worth or give herself away to someone that just wants to keep tangoing with to karmic toxic energies. Period. Done deal, done Zola. Let's get some oracle guidance to close out our reading today. We're gonna do it, we're gonna get it from the Crystal Mandala deck. Yes? Okay. <sighs> All right. Let's see what we've got to close out this reading today. I'm just gonna give this three shuffles here. One. Two. And three. All right, so closing message please, Spirit. Oh, we've got two. Okay. We have God number 54, Goddess Pele and Lava Stone. P 
pale, pale, sorry, melt into divine desire. And then we also have card number 10, angel Ista and carnelian, nourishment. So let's go in chronological order here and start with 10. Okay. <laughs> we bring you the gift of nourishment. You are ready to grow. And to do this, you need food for your body, your mind, and your soul. We want you to feel fed with what brings you life, with what helps you feel good, with what heals you, increases your energy and your power. We know that you need and want, I'm sorry, we know what you need and what can assist you to grow in mind, body, and spirit. We know that life can be a banquet for the soul. There are so many choices as to what you can feed yourself, and sometimes you may be confused about what is good for you and what is not. Let go of any doubt or shame, guilt or fear about being nourished now, as we guide you towards what will truly feed your life force and bring you happiness. Okay, and then finally you have card number 54. Melt into divine desire. And I really feel like this is what you're doing right now. You're melting into divine desire. And it's more than just, you know, it, it, your, your, your perspective on the divine, your perspective on spirituality, your, pers your perspective on all of that stuff has changed. It's not, it's not this energy anymore, the hierophant. It's not conformity. It's not the, the confines of religion and, and social conditioning and social norms and all that stuff. It's not that. And it never really has been that. It's so much more. It's so much more than that. And I really feel like you guys are giving yourself the opportunity to just fucking melt into it. Just fucking do it, dude. Who the fuck cares? It's your life. Live it how you want to. Don't let anybody else tell you who to be or what to be or how to, how to act. No. The fuck is that? <laughs> right? We bring you the empowerment of melting into divine desire. There is a time and a place on the spiritual path for detachment. The ability to step back and perceive from a neutral perspective can bring great clarity. There is a time for the mind to become clear and peaceful and open to divine guidance, even if that means temporary loss for greater long-term gain. There is also a time to melt into divine desire to allow your passion to motivate and inspire you to attain great progress on your divine life journey, where less fervent longing could not. Desire doesn't have to be a distraction from your divine path. It can be a way you discover what has meaning for you and what you feel strongly enough about to never give up on. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you guys have a fantastical day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very soon. Yeah? Take care. Mwah. Bye. <laughs> Peace. Deuces. Oh, come on, you. This remote.